早速飯にしようグレーシアの料理はうまいぞYou know, today seems like a good time for quiche and just not a good time for rain. If you want to pick up a headband, I have limited quantities. Links are down below. Pick them up while you can. I wish I could just do like a Renkin Jitsu and just have this done, you know? So for our tart shell, we are going to need 145 grams of all-purpose flour, 225 grams of cold unsalted butter, 45 milliliters of ice water, some thyme, sage, rosemary, and a pinch of salt. Now take your flour and place it into your food processor, followed by your really cold unsalted diced butter. It has to be really cold. Now for your herbs, you do want to add those straight into this mix as well before we add in any liquid, so this way the food processor does chop up some of those herbs. Since I am using rosemary, thyme, and sage, this is going to give it a really, really nice flavor to complement everything else we're going to add later, but feel free to just use really whatever herbs you want. Adding herbs to your tart shell is the best and easiest way to get a ton of extra flavor out of it. Now, once you have your herbs added to it, throw a pinch of salt right on top. Entertain the wife because this is what happens at the house. Wait, no, I, I ruined it, no way! <laughs> She told me to edit that out, but I said, no, we're making tart shell. So pulse your tart shell in the food processor for just about 20 to 30 seconds. You want this to look kind of like really thick granules of sand. The reason for this is because if you overwork this, you're actually going to start melting the butter, which is what you don't want to do. The tart shell should have bits of butter all the way throughout. Now, once you have that nice consistency, add in your 45 milliliters of ice water, turn this thing on, and I'm going to show you in real time how quickly this actually turns into your dough. This is why I actually really like making tart shells this way, because it is super simple and really, why would you buy tart shell dough if you can make it this quickly? The entire process only takes about 10 minutes with whatever prep you're using. If you're leaving out herbs or anything else, it actually goes a lot faster than that. Once your tart shell dough is ready to go, don't play with it too much because you don't want to melt any of those butters. Just make sure it's in a nice top ball. Place this onto some plastic wrap and gently press this down into around a quarter inch to half an inch thickness. Once you have that in to that nice puck, wrap this with plastic wrap and place this in the fridge overnight or at least four hours before you work with it. This allows the butter to reharden so that way it doesn't melt on you later when you go to roll it out. Now it does make your life super easy if you use a tart shell pan that has a removable bottom for this. But as you can hear, this is completely solid. So what I'm gonna do is pull this out of the fridge about 10 minutes before I decide to work with it. After those 10 minutes, place your dough onto a lightly floured surface and roll this thing out into around an eighth of an inch worth of thickness. You can also measure this out by the size of your pan that you're working with, but really it, it's up to you as to how thick you want your tart shell. I like mine at that eighth of an inch thickness, so that way you do have a good amount of crust, but it isn't overwhelming when you go to bite into this thing. Now I want to show you what this actually looks like up close because you can see all the bits of herb and some of the bits of butter that are still in this tart shell. That's really what you're looking for. Now grab your tart shell pan and make sure that it does come up to size. If it does, fold this in half and then fold it in half once again. We're going to use this technique to actually unfold into the tart shell. Grab your tart shell and hit this with just a touch of pan spray. You don't need too much because it is non-stick, but just a little bit. Now place this with the corner directly in the center of your tart shell and unfold it and you are going to actually be able to cover your entire tart shell pan with this dough. Now gently, gently press in your tart shell into the sides of the pan. You want to make sure you do this very carefully so this way you don't tear any bit of your tart shell. If it does tear, you may have a blowout, so just keep that in mind. Now I do trim off the edge of my tart shell, but some people like to actually double over and make a double thick wall crust so that's totally up to you. I don't actually like the double thick wall crust because I feel like it's too much crust so I went ahead and trimmed off all of my excess dough. You can also use some of this excess dough if you have a tear or a blowout after you've rolled this thing out so keep that in mind. Once you have everything trimmed up give this a gentle press into the sides of the pan making sure that it is nice and tight so this way you don't have any weird concaved issues in your tart shell. Once you have your tart shell ready to go place this in the fridge for at least one hour or in the freezer for about 15 minutes so that butter has time to cool down. Now for the remainder of your scraps, I just like to roll this back up and roll it out into a small piece of dough so this way, really, we're just going to turn this into snacks. But again, you could save this for another future project.
perfect or whatever the case is. If you are going to roll this into snacks, all you really need to do is put this back together. Don't really worry about the butter content in this because it's kind of a throwaway in a snack. Roll it out into smaller pieces and then slice this guy. Once you have everything sliced up, it's as simple as seasoning this with a bit of salt and pepper, throwing this into the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit until really you have yourself little bread snacks. Now for the filling. The filling is going to consist of eight whole eggs that you can crack single-handedly and then get eggshells in your bowl or just crack them regularly. 225 milliliters worth of heavy cream. You want to make sure it's heavy cream for this. And then proceed to whisk this to break down the yolks and the egg whites and incorporate them with that heavy cream. Now when you're whisking this, make sure to not over whisk it because you actually don't want too many air bubbles in your egg mixture. Now I am using a whole shallot for this, but feel free to use a nice sweet onion instead. I actually really like the flavor of the shallots because they can be sweeter and the taste isn't as harsh as an onion could be. I like slicing them like this so that way I have bigger bites of shallot in my quiche rather than getting them minced and they just kind of disappear in your quiche. Now the cheese is totally up to you, but I love Gruyere in this style of a quiche, so I am going to use Gruyere. I'm only going to use 100 grams worth of this Gruyere, but I also like to make sure I cut this into smaller cubes. The reason for this is if you cut it into smaller cubes rather than shredding it, you'll actually get really beautiful pockets of cheese in your quiche rather than it kind of just disappearing into the entire mix. And now for the good good, I am using bacon. Feel free to use chicken for this, particularly chicken thighs would go really well with this combination or just chicken breast if you have it laying around. But I am using bacon because I love the flavor that it provides and you'll see how we actually cook this with the shallots in just a minute and why I like using bacon this way. And no Gandalf, this bacon is not for you, buddy. Now the reason why I like using bacon is because I can render this down to actually use that fat to then cook my shallots. So in a medium heat pan, you don't want this too hot to start so you don't actually burn any of that bacon because we want to do this at a slow and low render. This does take about five to 10 minutes depending on how much bacon you're using, but you want to make sure you do this slowly so you start to render all of that fat off of the bacon. Once you have some of that bacon fat rendered off, add all of your shallots directly on top of this bacon. Now we're going to cook this together until you actually cook down that bacon to where you get some color on it and those shallots have cooked down and become soft. Oh and look, our nice little snacks are ready out of the oven so feel free to eat these if you really want to just intermittently. Look at the layers in this. I'm really happy with how this came out. Now while those bacon and shallots are hanging out of there and rendering, we are going to dock the tart shell. Docking just means poking it with a bunch of holes to prevent any blowouts due to air bubbles. Air bubbles can happen so just make sure you do dock your tart shell. Now line this with some parchment paper and add in some pie weights, beans, I'm using rice in particular to weigh down my actual shell. This is really important because if you don't do this you can have a shell that erupts basically from the center because it wasn't weighed down. So once you have it nicely weighed down, we're going to pop this in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes with those weights on it. While that's going, your bacon and your shallots should be done. Now you can save some of that bacon fat, but I'm going to strain out the bacon and the shallots first. The reason for that is this bacon fat actually has a lot of liquid from the shallots in it, so you can't really use it for too many things. Now in this same pan with the fond, add in a ton of spinach. This comes out to about three or four cups worth of spinach, just a bunch of handfuls, or feel free to use Swiss chard, collard greens, whatever greens you really want. Add in just a touch of liquid to help deglaze the bottom of that pan and also steam the spinach. Once the spinach has cooked down slightly, hit it with a pinch of salt and make sure you remove all of that fond off the bottom because we are all fond of fond. Once your spinach is fully cooked, place this into your bowl of choice to fully cool down. Remember, when you're doing something like a quiche, it is really important to have your inclusions completely cold before you add them to anything. Now that we're done with the inclusions, our tart shell is also done on its first bake. So after those first 20 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, remove the weights from your tart shell and place them back into your container of choice to cool down so this way you can use them again later. Now this tart shell does have to cook for an additional 20 minutes, but since my shell was gaining a little too much color on the edges of it, I decided to wrap this in some aluminum foil just to protect those edges so they don't further brown too much. Once you've wrapped the edges in some aluminum foil, bake this for another 20 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. After 400 degrees Fahrenheit, this should be somewhat firm to the touch and let this cool down before we do anything with it. After cooling down, we get to fully load up our quiche. Place down your spinach first, making sure you do not include any of that extra liquid to not make it soggy. I like to spread out my spinach as evenly as possible, so this way you have a nice even layer all the way throughout and then you just eat the rest of it, dude, really. Now do the same thing with your shallots and your bacon. I like to make sure I do toss this just a bit in that same bowl to gather some of that bacon grease, and then lay this as evenly as possible on top of your spinach. Once you have this fully 
fully loaded up, this is when we begin to add our chunks of cheese. Now, the way I like to think about it is trying to imagine where I'm going to cut this quiche, so this way I can have the most even layer of this cheese on my slice of quiche. Now, begin pouring in your egg and your cream mixture very slowly to start filling in any crevices that you may have. The reason why I like to do this slowly is so that way the mixture can slowly spread evenly throughout the entire quiche. I like to push my luck with my quiche so this way I have the maximum amount of egg and cream. Now season this with black pepper and a pinch of salt right on top because we did not season the egg and the cream before. Place your aluminum foil back onto that shell to protect the edges, making sure that the foil doesn't fall into the quiche like mine did, which you'll see later. And once you have everything well protected, this is going to go back into the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes to an hour. And yes, I was listening to a podcast. After that 45 minutes to an hour, this thing is beautiful and ready to go, but we can't eat it yet. Remove the foil from your quiche and you can see where mine kind of stuck just a bit on the edge there because I let the foil fall into the quiche. It didn't hurt it too bad, but this does need to cool down for another 45 minutes or so before we decide to slice it. Now to slice this, all you really have to do is remove the tart shell from its false bottom very carefully, making sure it doesn't slide around or anything because I know this can be greasy. And there is our beautiful quiche ready to go. And I did have a slight blowout on one side, but it's not going to matter. Nobody has to, oh, that'll be my piece. We won't show that to anyone. When you're ready to cut this thing, slice it down the center first. Don't be an idiot like me and remove this from the false bottom so you're not cutting on your Teflon because that's a big no-no. And continue to cut this into eight equal slices. Cut it in half, eat the whole thing whole. I don't, I don't care what you do. I don't know, cut out the center with a ring mold and eat the center. And after after a good amount of time, there is our beautiful quiche from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. There it is guys, Gracia's quiche from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Now this is a pretty simple recipe and I would recommend you guys making that tart dough like a day ahead, letting it hang out in the fridge. You can also freeze it, it freezes really well, but this is just so simple to do and you can see the layers, like look at, look I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pick this up. It's, it's nice and warm, I retoasted it, you can see the layers in there and that's kind of what I look for. I like to have a lot of filling and then have the egg just kind of bind everything together. That's really how I like to make my quiche, my tarts, anything really. We're just gonna go and look at that. The crust is nice and cooked. It's super flaky and cheers guys. This, I'm, I've been, I've been wanting this all day. It's salty, it's fatty, it's creamy. The crust gives it that beautiful like herb texture and flavor to it. A little bit of black pepper on top. Look at the pastry. Look at it. Can you can you see? Come on camera. There it is. You see the flakiness in that? That's like absolutely beautiful because it's super tender. This is a winner, 100%. I'm probably gonna eat another slice after this. And you guys should probably head out to the links below where you can pick up a brand new Shokugeki headband or a brand new Shokugeki shirt. Make sure you join our challenge where you can win a knife. My name is Chef PK. Get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food. Oh, this is, this is so good. Holy.